In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to create this throwing knife animation in iClone 8. Now this is going to be a continuation of our previous video where we showcased how to clean up our Sony Makopi data. Now this is a brand new character that I developed for the Reillusion Content Store and Marketplace. It's the Fey Warrior, and she prioritizes throwing knives as her primary weapon. However, I didn't have any throwing knife animations, so I had to go record them. And that is what we did in the previous video is cleaned up this performance so that we do have this nice kind of spinning throwing animation, which was relatively difficult for the Sony Makopi to capture, but we've got it in a nice spot. So now we need to add the throwing knives in. The thing for this is going to be making sure that the throwing knives are attached to the hands, as you see here, and as she releases them, the throwing knives will go across the empty space and then lodge into our orc character who is attacking and stay stuck in him like throwing knives would do. So in order to do that, I'm gonna jump back into the pack. I'm gonna have my character selected. So again, this is the Fey Warrior pack that I recently released. I'm gonna take this throwing knife and I'm gonna double click on it and it's gonna add it in to the right hand. We're not going to utilize it that way. That's just the way that I set up the pack for ease of use. But what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we go into this attach function right here. I'm going to say detach. And then I'm going to move this throwing knife on over. And it's going to be linked up to this leg holster, essentially. So I'm just going to line it up as if it had another slot. So now, instead of hitting attach, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to linkage. Now, the difference between the two is attach will actually attach it as if it's an accessory to the costume. So if you detach it, that's it. There's either attach or detach. With linkage, when you pick the parent, you can detach it and then attach it to somewhere else. So this one is going to be attached to the thigh twist 01. So let's take a look real quick and we can see that, yep, it is attached. And so what I want it to look like is that after those first two throwing knives go across the screen, that left hand almost looks like it comes in and grabs the throwing knife, which obviously it doesn't, but based on the way that the camera angle will be, we can just make it look like it does, or we could go in and adjust with animation layers and we can get that hand a little closer to the thigh. But for this demonstration purpose, what we're gonna do is stay focused on the task at hand, which is making this look like it's going across the screen. So as we have the character spin around, I'm going to find the point where the hand comes closest to the thigh, which is gonna be about this frame right here. So what we'll do is we're gonna say the on the frame before, I'm gonna hit unlink. When you do that, it offsets the positioning of this throwing knife. So we don't want that. What we wanna do is hit unlink and keep position. So now, as the character spins around, that's when this will stay locked in space. So that's gonna be our transitionary point to going to the hand. So in order to do that, let's open up for our additional options and hit constraint. We're gonna go into this constraint and then you're gonna see we have link and link offset. I'm gonna go back one frame and I'm just gonna hit pick parent again and make sure it's still on the thigh so that when it detaches here, that's gonna give us the option to just go straight into the next attachment. So instead of overlapping them, what I'm gonna do is it detaches on this frame and on this frame it's going to be on the hand so I'm going to hit pick parent and then it's going to be the hand so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up and put it in the hand and just like that it goes up into her hand so now when you see that all go relatively quickly it's just going to look like she picks it up so let's go make sure it's in her hand. So that transition is gonna be pretty 
smooth. So obviously with some motion blur, you won't even see that transition, but if you really want to come into and go into the more depth, you can. So as we go through, we're going to bring it to about the point where she's going to release it. So that's kind of like our release point. So I'm going to go back. I'm just going to see. I might want it to release one frame earlier than this. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit Picked Parent again. Just make sure that that's there. And then I'm going to next frame over and I'm going to unlink and keep position. So now that'll stay there. What that's also going to do is that's going to add a nice transform key for us, which is very convenient because that is going to be what we're transitioning to using as it flies across the screen. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to see where our orc kind of reacts to that one. So right there. So I'm going to now hit W, bring up my transform and pull it across the screen, across that empty space, and bring it up to right in front of the area that we want to embed into the orc. Right there, right above the heart. So let's take a look at that speed. decent and so now on the next frame after that go one more frame up and I'm gonna hit pick parent and select the orc so now this is attached to him but what I want to do is I want to see where it was supposed to hit right there and he's now reacting so I just need to offset that a little bit bit over and a little bit down. There we go. So let's take a look from this perspective. So it's a nice quick throw. One more time. So one of the things that I'm going to want to do is I these are kind of a, a short span of time to go across, but by default, keyframes in iClone 8 work on a Bezier curve. So if you can kind of see it right here, it starts slowly out of the hand, speeds up, and then slows down right before it hits the orc, which is not what we really wanted to do. We want it to be a more linear transition. And so that's real easy to do. We're gonna go into our transform keys, which are right here select those now you can right click it but you're not going to get this option so what you need to do is go to the last one so this last key right here I'm going to right click on it hit transition curve and then I'm going to be able to select linear so now what that's going to do is just going to keep a consistent motion going from right from the hand to where the end point is at the work so, so that looks good Let's take a look at that now. And just like that, we now have our final animation. So the next step in the process really is to add a nice camera movement in to accentuate the performance, but then it's rendering it out. So whether you're making a cinematic for Unreal Engine or if you're making a cinematic in Blender, the only thing I would recommend doing on top of this is once you're happy with the performance, say if you wanted to add some spins into the throwing knife or not, once you're happy with it, I would say click on the prop Double, double click on it, then go up to animation and flatten all motions with constraints. That's essentially gonna set it up as its own prop within the scene. It has its own kind of bone system at that point. But what that means is it's no longer constrained specifically to the character or to the orc, which will help 
kind of avoid any issues that you would have when it comes to constraints within Blender or Unreal Engine. Just in case those don't get baked down in the export process, this is a great way to just kind of finalize everything. The only thing then that I would recommend is making sure that then the characters themselves and these throwing knife props share the same world position so that you don't have any offsetting issues either. But that's how I would go about sending out these animations to Blender or Unreal Engine. But you can send it out to any program of your choice. That's just how I would recommend doing it. Again, if you do like the look of our Fey Warrior character and you want to use her in your own projects, then I would recommend checking out our link in the description where you can find links to the Fey Warrior, the Michaela Vale Fey Warrior hair. But if you really just want to get everything all at once, I recommend going with the bundle because you can get some exclusive items with that as well. So check that out if you want to support the channel or if you think you can use this in your own stories. Hopefully you've gleaned a lot of good information that will help you in your narrative process and bringing your own stories to life with 3D animation. My name is Eric from Libertas Video and I'll see you in the next one.